guys. Hey everyone. Selamat datang kembali di channelnya My Bule Bule bersama saya John dan ini istri saya Kate. Kali ini kita akan berbicara tentang salah satu topik yang sensitif yang sudah sering kalian tanyakan di beberapa komentar di video kami yaitu tentang Asian Hate. Jadi kita akan membahas tentang pengalaman kita di sini, apa yang saya alami khususnya uh, kepada kalian semua. Jadi jangan kemana-mana tonton videonya sampai selesai ya. So, can you describe for people about the recent events that have happened hmm. around surrounding Asian hate in yeah. America? Yeah. Teman-teman, uh, kekerasan terhadap warga keturunan Asia atau warga Asia di Amerika ini bukan baru terjadi belakangan ini, tapi sudah selama bertahun-tahun. Cuman, uh, kasusnya itu meningkat selama pandemi corona uh, virus ini di tahun 2020. Itu banyak ada kejadian di beberapa daerah yang memicu adanya protes uh, tentang anti-Asian hate uh, dari warga-warga keturunan atau warga-warga Asia dan juga para simpatisan. So I grew up in a small town in Vermont, which is a state that's like mostly countryside. There's no real big cities, um, and a lot of the people there are have white background and are homogeneous, all kind of the same, and have the same culture. And so, growing up, I sort of lived in a bubble. I just wasn't really exposed to a lot of people that were from other countries, other cultures. Um, there were like a few different groups of refugees that were there. Um, but they also kind of stuck to their own little bubbles as well. I think for me, I was under the impression as a kid, or mm. it was sort of like inferred by me, maybe the way I was educated or um, the different things in our curriculum that like racism was sort of something of the past, like mm. something that we as America have overcome. Like we had the civil rights movement, we had the civil war already, like, all right, racism's mm. gone. And I think being someone who lived in a small, mostly white town, I just didn't experience it or witness it, even though it definitely existed. Um, so, I, I mean, how do you think your uh, perceptions evolved towards... Uh, racism? Racism or towards uh, yeah. different ethnicity groups? So, I think for me, Part of educating yourself on racism is by listening to people who are different than you and exposing yourself to cultures that are different than mm -hmm. your own. So that's when I decided to move to Boston mm -hmm. because I wanted to learn about people who are different than me and um, learn about other cultures mm -hmm. and be exposed to different ways of thinking besides what I had been raised in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when I made friends with people who were Asian American and African American and just all over the world, basically, very much yeah. more um, broad group of people. Right. Yeah, some of you asked about my own experience uh, when I got here. So, to me, I didn't really uh, experience any racial discriminations as far as I know, like, because I came here for study and then in education institution in the university that I went to, uh, there are so many people from uh, different countries, so, and I was surrounded by many international students as well, so I didn't really experience any negative uh, discriminations. So the other thing that, uh, the reasons why I didn't really encounter any racial uh, discriminations is because the place where I work, I mean, how I go to work, I. I don't really use public transport at this time, so I didn't have to like uh, interact, interact with, with people the with domain. the public domain. I drive to work and then come back home, and even at my office as well, um, there's a lot of varieties of people like uh, from different ethnicities, from different countries. Like 50%, more than 50% of uh, people in my team are basically from different countries. Jadi uh, perusahaan tempat saya bekerja itu sama seperti dengan perusahaan yang lain. So similar to other companies, they have they uh, apply this anti-racism policy. Jadi no ya, tidak ada toleransi. Jadi anti rasisme itu sangat sangat uh, penting, sangat sensitif di kantor. Kalau ada perlakuan perlakuan rasisme itu uh, yang bersangkutan bisa 
ditindak tegas bisa dipecat juga bisa dipecat jadi itu serius setiap every year we have to take the training we have to make sure that we pass the training about this anti-racism policy make sure that we understand any comments that we make uh, it's not about our intentions it is about how it is perceived by the people that we talk to mm -hmm. so if the people interpret it as Racism, uh, racism then we will be hold, we will we yeah. will be held accountable uh, lately we've been trying to educate ourselves more about uh, racism and then how to bridge the gap of our uh, perspective I learned and I realized that some of the encounters that I have in the past in here in Boston actually have very subtle uh, racial negative sentiment towards me based on the mm. questions they asked like I got asked I got commented but at that time I didn't really think that was racial opinions towards yeah. me so I didn't really take that personally and then in general I didn't really take uh, things into heart because uh, I know for sure I have like a I know my identity is not American. I'm Indonesian, but now I'm an immigrant here. America has been my second home because I'm married to uh, an American mm -hmm. beautiful woman. <laughs> my point is, um, it is hard for Asian Americans who were born and raised here because America has been their, this their home. home country this since their home. they were born. Their culture, their exactly. home, their identity. And then being called like, uh, go back to your country, go back to where? Because mm -hmm. they were born and raised here. And then think about if you're born and raised here and then get called like, hey, go back okay. to your, your home country. And then I would feel where? so where betrayed. To? And it's like betrayal. Like betrayal. Yeah. Yeah. And then not only that, they experience all this uh, violence, they experience all of this hatred yeah. and for things that they didn't do, but just because they have to look like yeah, Asian, just, just okay. because they have to carry this heavy burden mm -hmm. uh, consequences. So for me, I think that is so heartbreaking. Uh, America is supposed to be a place of opportunity, exactly. freedom. Yeah you know, safety and security. Um, it's a country, it's a country of immigrants, and, basically. And we're supposed to be tolerant to yeah. people who are different. We're supposed to, you know, the Statue of Liberty says, give us your weak, give us your poor, you know? Exactly. Open arms, that's, that's what we think of, you know, when we see the American yeah. flag. And it breaks my heart that it has become, for some people, an exclusive thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that some of us feel more entitled to that yeah. than others because in my opinion it's about human rights and if you're human yeah. you have the right to these things um and so i think about my own family history and i think how you know one of my great 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 ancestors came on the mayflower because they were looking for religious freedom and then um, one of my ancestors came over because of the potato famine in mm -hmm. Ireland. They were out of food there. Um, another ancestor came looking for job opportunities because there just weren't very many opportunities in Italy. Yeah. Um, so for many, many reasons, my French Canadian ancestors came to America because work was offered to them in mm -hmm. Vermont. You know, um, they were all immigrants. They were all outsiders and they all had a different culture. And they were all like seeking for better opportunities because this is a land of opportunities. This is mm -hmm. a country land of equal opportunities right. to everybody else. And you know, even at the time, there were people who showed negative sentiment towards them because they yeah. were new and they were outsiders and they felt unwelcomed at the time. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's kind of like a very, very sad. Here in America, they call uh, Asian American, they call African. African American, they call it Mexican American, mm -hmm. but for people who are in the white group uh, community, they don't call like Irish American, they don't call like European Amer mm -hmm. American. Uh, Not that? anymore. I think earlier on they did. I think people were sort of labeled by their European heritage at mm -hmm. that time, but now, I mean, almost every American who's white is a blend of all the European countries or some of the European countries. So you can't really look at a white person and be like, oh, they're Irish American or they're Italian American. It's sort of like those lines have been blurred so much mm -hmm. that it, you can't visually um, 
separate out them mm. into categories. But I remember a story of my own grandmother talking about how, so she was Irish and my grandfather was Italian. And my grandmother was talking about how all the Irish Americans in her neighborhood sort of were wary of the Italian Americans that had moved in because they were always like cooking with garlic and that was weird. Like you don't cook with garlic mm. smelly. And you know, yeah. so even back then people were creating barriers because they had a fear of the unknown. Feel fear frightened. of what's different, what's yeah. um, not their norm. Yeah, yeah. And you know, maybe fear of like losing their own identity because new identities are coming in or new right. influences. But to me, that's kind of one of the things that makes America awesome yeah. is that it is a place where so many ways of thinking, so many cultures, so many different people intersect with each other, are intersecting and sharing with each other and learning from each other and growing. And I feel like if you just stay in your same ways of doing everything, you never grow, you never um, are enlightened by anything right. else, and you never are challenged. Um, That's true. And so it's a missed opportunity if we're not at least open to it. The thing is, not everybody thinks the same way, yeah, in yeah. every country. Yes, jadi uh, teman-teman, uh, karena ada beberapa kejadian kekerasan di beberapa uh, daerah, itu memicu adanya protes juga untuk uh, anti-Asia, protes anti-Asia kekerasan yang terjadi ini, supaya pemerintah secara serius mengambil tindakan, terutama untuk Uh, memasukkan pelajaran-pelajaran sejarah tentang Asian American di uh, pelajaran-pelajaran sekolah di kurikulum sekolah. Nah, um, so what do you think about the Asian American history in school education right now? So I mean, like I was saying, I grew up not really learning anything much about Asian American so immigrants. There were, I there or history, not. like the only. Um, Asian related history I remember learning about was when we um, put Japanese Americans in internment camps during World War II out of fear of mm. the spies and people who were, you know, after Pearl mm. Harbor happened. Um, that was, that's really about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I also remember, yeah, I mean, most of my Asian education was going to local Chinese food restaurants that were right. very Americanized or Indian food restaurants or, you know, Asian food restaurants, right. which were like not really authentic. So, um, and then whatever I saw on TV, which often like shows during that time or movies often kind of created these caricatures so of you were, those cultures. So you were saying that there was none in so, the formal education there was curriculum. barely any that I recall. And do you think now they have they it? They probably or have more now. What about your school? My school, honestly, yeah. I mean, I only taught second grade. When Asia comes up in history classes, it's often world history. So it's like talking about China in China. Oh, so it's talking about um, Japan in regards to World War II. It's not talking about the experience of Asian Americans in America. But you guys are teaching about African and American history or We're not? talking, yeah, because of the Civil War and because of civil rights. Um, some Thanks. of the same um, awareness that we're trying to bring up around, you know, minorities such as African Americans or also just like even women's rights need to be extended to Asian Americans as mm, well. Yeah. Um, so now that our daughter uh, is half Asian, half white American, we think that it's necessary for us to learn how to educate, to prepare her as mm -hmm. early as possible mm -hmm. because uh, one of the American psychologists that we watch on the news mentioned that children at age of three, they're already able to uh, recognize any form of uh, racial discrimination. So mm -hmm. I think it is very important for us to learn uh, to teach them how to uh, speak up for themselves Mm -hmm. and then speak up for others because I think by standing up for others uh, means that you're modeling. modeling and then you can like uh, eventually stand up for yourself as well. The only way to become a good role model is to become aware of your own like subconscious biases and I mean everybody has them you know mm -hmm. everyone has sort of these things we don't realize that we think about groups of people and 
Um, nobody's perfect by any means, but mm -hmm. I think it's a constant growing and learning process. Right. We hope that you um, got something out of this video, yeah. and um, if you want to make a comment or want to mm. participate in the conversation, please leave your thoughts or questions in the comment section below. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and thank you so much for your support. Thanks. Don't forget to like the video. Like the video. Please like the video. And uh, follow subscribe, us. follow yeah. us. On Instagram, my Bullet Brulee. Yeah. Because we have a lot of uh, videos and photos about Ruth as well. Yeah. Ada banyak foto dan video. Yeah.